Hey guys, so we have some pretty exciting stuff, at least in my in my life. I have accomplished my five-year goal. We'll talk about what that is, but one thing I do every year on this channel is I do a, a yearly goal, what I hope to accomplish, but that's all in scope of a larger objective, a larger five-year plan, right? We To accomplish our five-year plan, we have to do stuff every single year, typically, and cool that we actually accomplished our five-year plan in four years which means that maybe we should have kicked it up a notch or maybe things went well but what we're going to talk about is creating a five-year plan what mine was and what my next five-year plan is and why you should do it really at the end of the day I want to take a moment to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. Dev Mountain has various programs from iOS development to UI UX, full stack web development, and quality assurance. I actually had the pleasure of visiting one of their campuses about two years ago in Provo when they still had a location there. And it was a fantastic experience just to be able to meet everybody, see the campus, and it one thing that's unique about them is they actually include housing with their tuition. So if you're interested, check the link in the description below. So the first thing I want to say is I'm pretty open with money and sometimes that rubs people the wrong way. So I want to just sort of preface this video that I am a very money oriented individual because I think it gives you options. And so a lot of my goals typically are financial in nature, although the next five years, not as much, um, or at least I would say there's additional things that, <clears throat> that fall into that category but you know it's something that some people are uncomfortable with but I'm, I'm very transparent right I've done videos on my salary and things like that but I always feel to put that disclaimer out there um, because money isn't everything but it is something uh, and it is something that um, has made my life a little bit easier and um, a little bit more enjoyable so with that being said um, you know five-year plans why do we have them well uh, the idea with a five-year plan is to understand where you want to go. It's very easy to be, you know, it's very easy to be one of those people. And as, as someone who has been there where you're just sort of going with the flow, going with the flow leaves you right where you are five years later, 10 years later, right? And you need to take an active approach in your life, which is why every year I create a one-year plan. <clears throat> with the goal of accomplishing my five-year plan and when I came down to Florida which I've been here about uh, four years now a little less than four years um, before I came down here April and I discussed what is our five-year plan with coming to Florida what is our five-year plan you know because it's a big leap of faith for for her to jump from there from California to come with her recently reconnected boyfriend who, you know, has been going through some some changes at the time, uh, emotional changes and maturing and growing and taking this big leap, you know, 3,000 miles away. And so we discussed this very clearly, and we've always had a plan of action. Sometimes we've made good choices towards it, sometimes it's bad. But the idea with a five-year plan is to really every year come up with actions that you're going to accomplish for that. Now, I've done videos about that. What we're talking about is what my five-year plan was and how we were able to succeed with it so uh what was my five-year plan well um the first major thing was to become a senior dev right which is a a reasonable thing to accomplish i think but it's kind of a scary thing when you created the plan um after some thought when you're on your way to go and get your first junior level role but the goal was always to go and make sure the career advances you know, part of why I wanted to become a software developer uh, from a pizza delivery driver was that that's really, there's not really much to go. In fact, as, <laughs> uh, working as a delivery driver, you oftentimes make more money than the managers or the assistant managers, I should say. The managers usually get like, uh, depending on the organization, but typically <laughs> between tips and that, you actually make more money than the assistant managers, which would sort of, I guess, be the next step up. Um, but this, the idea that about starting that career was I, I want to progress. I want to make sure that, um, you know, every year I'm doing better. But um, every five years, there's a significant 
change in my career, that I'm doing what I need to, that I think a five-year period of time is enough to advance my career. So I, I was able to accomplish that. I'm very, very happy about that. So the next thing was buy a house. This was something that, you know, I have, I've grown up in uh, apartments uh, majority of my life. My, my father owned homes, but, you know, we delivered to my mother and went to my father's on, the, on every other weekend sort of thing. So I, I would generally say I've lived in apartments the majority of my life. And as my adult life, up until the last um, year and three months, uh, we've lived in nothing but apartments. So owning a home was a really big deal for me and something I wanted to make sure that I did. Something that was a, you know, I always wanted a path to f sort of financial freedom. And it's not so much um, that I want financial freedom. It's I want not, uh, I don't want to be in the position in life where I am elderly and sick and, um, you know, not able to provide for myself or my family. That was always something that sort of scared me. And I've talked about negative role models in the past. And, um, you know, seeing, I've seen some of those people who are, had whatever their life choices may have led them, were in that, that situation. And I, I didn't want that to be me, right? No judgments, but I'm just saying that's not what I ever wanted. And buying a house, in my eyes, um, and we can we can disagree with this, but buying a house in my eyes was one of the items where I wanted to make sure that this was something that I started building that equity, right? My rent check wasn't going down the, the drain every month. I was building that principle and I was building equity over the years. And like to me, that was something that was really imprinted in my mind that I wanted to accomplish. And I was very happy that I was able to do that, right? And that's something I, I'm... I'm, I'm very proud of because it was hard, right? It's hard to save large sums of money um, and pull the trigger on it. And it was very scary when I bought the house. I'm, I'm not so scared about buying future houses, but buying your first first home is a very scary experience. So that was something that was part of my um, five-year plan that I was very happy about. So um, a uh, salary of 100000 I That was an, another one of my goals. And this, these next ones are very money-related, but... It all supports the sort of life goal of financial options. I don't really like independence, uh, but financial options where we're able to, um, when bad things happen in life, and they will, that we can at least try and be prepared. I'm not saying we're going to be prepared, but we're going to, um, you know, we're going to try and be prepared. Um, so um, that was something that was a, a big objective of mine and something that happened much earlier on than I anticipated around two years. Uh, and I think part of that was just my two years, uh, in, in the, in the five-year plan, which were coming up on four years. Uh, something that I just like, I, maybe I, maybe I just didn't understand the market. I, I don't know, but that was something that was a very, um, big goal of mine because I, I sort of knew where I wanted to be and how much I wanted to invest in that number. There's something like, it, it just, I don't know, it's money shouldn't define you or your salary shouldn't define you, but it, that was a, for whatever reason, that was a number that, you know, I, it made me feel like I made it, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's kind of like the, the, um, you know, hashtag road to a hundred thousand subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I, I it's one of my goals to get on that wall, the, <laughs> the, um, silver play button, but it's kind of like that where it doesn't necessarily validate you, but it's kind of nice. Like that's, that's what it was for me where I wanted to get it up there. Cause I knew what it could do for me, but it was also like, yeah, hey, man, we did it. You know, <laughs> like I, I don't, I don't know. Um, all right. An another, um, goal of mine was a, a semi-passive income of about $15,000 a year. And, and we were lucky enough to be able to do that. I say semi-passive because, um, you know, realistically, no real income is, is sort of passive, like completely passive. Like even in the instance where I rent rooms in my home, the, uh, which isn't being factored into that uh, on a side note, but, um, it's still like, they're in my home <laughs> and like I, I barely see them but they, they still rent a room and we in, we interact a little bit um but between youtube and courses and 
uh, mentoring and other opportunities that come. Um, we've been able to do that uh, with, again with the goal of if bad times happen and let's say I'm unemployed, at least I have some money coming in. Like that was my, my real goal with passive income. It's always to have some money coming in for like worst case scenario. And like, um, that's sort of where my mentality is with passive income. Um, you know, I, I don't really need more money. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually pretty, pretty content. I don't really do too much, um, which will change in the next five years. But like, the money aspect is really security and it's sort of how I look at it. The sake of wanting money for money is stupid, right? I, um, like, I don't know. Like I've had this shirt since before I was a developer and a lot of my shirts are like dev shirts or things I get on sale for like three bucks, four bucks. I don't like, I'm not really trying to, I have everything I need except maybe a laptop. One day I want to get a laptop again. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, this will be the last like desktop I have, uh, just because I, I want a laptop so I can work in the living room sometimes. <laughs> but uh, that might be the only additional thing that I buy. Um, okay, the the final thing that I accomplished in my five year plan was um, be able to get my my net worth up to a hundred thousand, and so that's something that um, is about to happen probably when this video goes out, and that has been a consistent building and grinding and investing and and um saving and you know had to save a large portion of my income to accomplish that with with again the goal being of preparing for the future and um saving and you know the house is part of that i'm counting the equity that i've put it that i'm assuming that I, my house sells for what it, i bought it for right um paying down the mortgage and things like that all the money that i have in the home equity um you know stocks all that sort of stuff that but the idea there being planning for the future, giving options, making sure that, you know, um, that I'm setting myself up for the next five part of five year plan, which sort of brings me to this whole point about money is that <clears throat> it's not about the money. It's about lower levels of stress. And um, like I saw a statistic the other day that if you are in the poverty bracket, that statistically speaking children lower your level of happiness versus people who are financially well off it increases the level of happiness um and you know i always wanted to make sure that when i get married and have children that i i like i was that was it there's no chance for a divorce which is always a chance right uh, um which is probably something awful to say uh but i in my mind, there's always a chance, um, whether it's on your end or their end. Like you're like, dude, I'm never leaving her. She might leave your ass. Like you don't, you don't know, right? Um, but that that brings us to our next five year plan, which, again, all this setup is planning for the future and making sure that I'm able to do the things that I want to do. So, um, uh, relocating. That's what I want to do in the next um, five years. So when I came across, when I came out here for five years, for the five years to the Florida area, the goal was always to relocate um, somewhere back to the Midwest, not on the West Coast, too expensive. I always want to live in some place that's sort of uh, cheaper than California, which isn't that hard to do. But um, typically, I want to live in low cost areas and so um, and cool areas. So I've done hot and dry. Now done hot and humid. I, I'm doing. Uh, just cold and wet that's <laughs> that's all i'm looking for so um relocating in the midwest is something that will happen in the next five years and probably within the next year um setting things in motion already to make that happen um i want to be married um sort of that time i don't know it, it's uh there's nothing really holding us back so much as i'm a big believer of uh well, let me tell you i can say this because she's not here she's been trying to lock this down for years all right <laughs> um but no seriously uh there's i'm not really the idea of marriage isn't something that the idea of commitment is fine the idea of marriage involving legality legal stuff and it's kind of strange to me but i understand the importance to to a lot of people out there and i understand that um you know the next goal of having one or two children is you know I'd like to call them my little bastards, but I don't think, you know, my future baby's mama would appreciate it. Um, but uh, uh, on a more serious note, um, those are some real life goals that are are coming down the pipeline, right? Things that I have set this up 
particularly out of selfishness, but also out of understanding that these are items I can control in the moment that will help me in the future. Uh, now, uh, progressing the career, I want to be a tech lead or some sort of technical role. I plan on progressing my career, whether that's I, you know, uh, a team lead, tech lead, um, something along that lines. Those are our goals that I think I can do. And I have yearly goals of how I'm going to get there, speaking at conferences, viewing things like design principles, architecture, um, you know, mentoring, um, items like that, things that from talking with technical leads and, and lead developers, things that organizations are looking for, get into that sort of uh, role. Uh, it goes back to sort of progressing the career. I always want to be progressing. Um, I want to have a, a uh, I want to buy three houses. So um, when I sell this house, when I when I relocate, I plan on buying a home for uh, April and myself when we relocate. And um, you know, currently we're saving up to buy an investment property. And I would like to buy two investment properties essentially within the next five years. Things that we put twenty percent down and that they they pay for themselves or they hope ideally generate income whether we airbnb it or rent it out yearly whatever the case may be but the goal here is again to um plan for the future by investing in uh for in other items and that could be in um you know sort of to the my next point is that the net worth goal that we're trying to hit is about three hundred fifty thousand, about one hundred fifty thousand dollars more than what we hit uh in the previous five years but um basing that off of and, and one thing that's important is you have to have some sort of basis for what is accomplishable. When you set absurdly high goals that really there's minimal chance that you're going to succeed with it, it it can be very demotivating getting there. And so you want to set things that you can accomplish or that at least based in reality. So in this case, this is a hard stretch, but I, don't, it's, I think it's clearly based in reality where um, before we were ramping up with my income being about half as what of what it is now um and now with my income having doubled and and hopefully it'll stay that way <laughs> and april going into development and you know our current assets slowly increasing i think this is something that is an accomplishable goal um you know that's that's sort of where we're going i want to um, grow my semi-passive income to about um, thirty thousand. uh so i want to double it which isn't actually too far off from from uh we're about we're th that's a pretty reasonable goal um and it's actually kind of on the low end because the the objectives i have moving forward are not generating passive income like generating fifteen thousand dollars three thousand dollars a year additional passive income is something that's very reasonable but i don't want to necessarily de dedicate a whole mess of time to that um because when uh, one thing that I part of the reason all this stuff about doing all this prep and all this money talk is putting yourself in a position where you have time for the marriage, <laughs> you have time for the kids. And to the last goal that, that we have on here is um, traveling. So April and I for a very long time have wanted to travel uh, with a trailer to like the United States. So um, that'll be a goal of ours probably about two years from now, assuming I'm still working remote, which is a big assumption. But at some point, we'd like to take our buy a trailer um, and then um, drive around and do a little bit of uh, the digital nomad uh, lifestyle thing for a bit. So those are my next five-year goals and my previous five-year goals. I hope that you are planning your five-year goal, and I hope every year you're planning how you're going to get there. It's a very dangerous thing to not just think about and just think these things will happen. They don't just happen. You have to make active decisions on how to get there. If you have financial goals, you have to take a look at your budget, take a look at your income. You have to break it down in percents, investments, create an investing strategy, all this sort of stuff. And if you don't know anything about that, you gotta go educate yourself, right? You have to talk to people who have done it. Um, if you want to go and become a senior dev, go talk to senior devs. If you want to go and become a tech lead, go see what tech leads are saying. Um, you know, these are the things that you need to put mental energy into and time. They don't just happen. So um, with that all being said, I'm excited for the next five years. And one thing I can say that 
don't ever think your five years are going to go as you would anticipate it. Um, there's quite a few uh, things that have happened in, in these last four years or so that have thrown me some curveballs. And, you know, if you think your next five years are going to go uneventful and um, just smoothly, I don't. That's a very whimsical thought. It's dangerous to a degree. So with that all being said, thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe. And if you're interested in any of my courses, there are links in the description below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my latest course, the 100 Front End Interview Questions Challenge to make sure that you ace those front end interviews. Smash that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.